<laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Ivan Gancha. Um, I'm Deputy Director of the Telecommunication Research Center from University of Limerick, Ireland. So, and I am on uh, career leave in Bulgaria, uh, visiting two institutions there. So I'm going to present you the plenary talk, uh, <clears throat> Learning to Run with uh, Weights from Implicit Feedback for Effective Service Recommendations, uh, which I made with my colleagues uh, from China and uh, Ireland. Shown on this slide. Okay, here is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a short introduction into the area of recommendations, uh, then a brief uh, summary of the related work in this field. Uh, then I will present the research that we are conducting in this uh, area more specifically in the area of uh, service recommendations, and finally the conclusion. So, recommendation systems uh, became very important uh, due to the fact that uh, it's an enormous uh, ocean of information uh, and users can easily get lost in this uh, ocean. So these systems help the users to find the information, the thing, the service they need. Uh, the goal here is to provide the users with uh, accurate recommendations as fast as possible uh, in real time. This is a highly dynamic process, especially if you take into account the increasing number of uh, items, applications, things and services that are available to users. So which one of these is most suitable for each particular user? This is the main question that uh, services and systems like this try to answer. Uh, to date, the research and development efforts have been mostly focused on item recommendations, whereas the other three uh, sub-areas are not so much developed. Uh, so in the first type area, item recommendations, there are many examples of uh, uh, recommending to users uh, a possible good application that they might use in the future, which is similar to other applications they use in the moment, or because they are in particular location which is connected to this type of application. There are many examples uh, for online shopping, where you're browsing for an item, and then you can see uh, somewhere on the same window recommendations for other similar items, <clears throat> or items that other similar users have chosen. Uh, the same thing if you go to a restaurant and you don't know what you order, okay, you're provided with a digital menu and some recommendations that are matching your profile. Uh, from the entertainment sector, there are many examples for recommendation of TV programs, um, uh, video clips, streaming items, photos, music, etc. And even in the area of e-learning and mobile learning, uh, <clears throat> the examples where a personalized e-learning material or test is supplied to a particular user, depending on his ability, availability uh, at the moment, depending on his uh, or her knowledge, and so forth. Uh, in the sub-area of uh, app recommendations, uh, which I mentioned already, uh, there are very good examples from the commercial sector. Uh, and of course, Google Play and Apple Store are the main uh, players here, but their algorithms are not public, of course, so how they're doing this is uh, their secret. And also there is the so-called forgotten majority problem, uh, which means uh, majority of uh, recommendations that are provided to users uh, relate to 5 to 10 percent of the available apps, the so-called so uh, golden apps, whereas the other are forgotten, more or less. Uh, In the area of think recommendations, which is related to Internet of Things, uh, 
uh, which is becoming one of the main driving force of the economy, economy and society today. There are many examples in each IoT domain, for example, in smart transportation. Uh, recommendations here range from uh, uh, finding uh, optimal travel routes that a car uh, may follow, which is dynamically uh, changed depending on circumstances of uh, the traffic information, for example, and uh, to recommending to drivers uh, precise parking lot guiding informations, which is very important if you're in the uh, new city, for example, I came yesterday in Athens and where to find a parking lot, it's a huge problem in cities like this or in university campus uh, as well. In the <clears throat> IoT domain of smart health, recommendations here vary from personal health reminders, for example, uh, reminding a person that he needs to take a pill in a particular uh, hour, to pushing up-to-date health-related notifications about the availability of drugs uh, that he or she need to buy, and they're available nearby at a very good price. In the smart city domain, uh, here also many examples exist, uh, for, for instance, recommending uh, uh, and sending pushing alerts about high pollution or pollen count. Um, or air quality <coughs> index, which is not so good in particular area, so the user uh, will try to avoid this area if he has uh, related health problems. Uh, and here additional recommendation could be to supply a suitable route or the most uh, suitable route to follow in order to avoid these areas when he's traveling by car or by uh, bicycle, etc. In the smart home uh, subdomain, um, which relates to smart homes, which are equipped with uh, different sensors that uh, track uh, the user movements. This is usually uh, related to elderly uh, persons and assisting them in their daily life activities, sending recommendations about the next step they need to follow in order to complete particular action. <coughs> For example, to make a coffee, tea, to go to the bathroom, etc., etc., because people like this, they have uh, these problems. And now, uh, arriving at the sub area of service recommendations, uh, which received uh, great attention in the last few years, uh, recommending uh, a service, new service or new service component to users. So recommendations here vary from uh, recommending specific aspects, parameter, feature, or component of uh, an existing service to recommending a new instance of an existing service, which is better than the current instance that the user is uh, utilizing at the moment. You recommending a completely new service of the same type that the user is using at the moment. To recommending a new service provider which is just came into the market and is very attractive, has very attractive uh, uh, price, uh, quality ratio. And to uh, the more, the most complex uh, examples of uh, knowledge-based recommendations for dynamic runtime, proximity-based service compositions for mobile devices. So this relates to the composite complex services, which are made of uh, multiple atomic services and the user is uh, uh, able to change some of this on the fly if he is not satisfied with the quality of particular service component that he receives at the moment. So by following recommendations that he receives in uh, real time, he can do this, drop some of the components, replace them with another service component in order to get a better uh, service quality for himself. The thing here is the lack of global solution, which might be applicable to uh, all types of telecommunication services, uh, and also including many of the internet services and the newly emerging types of IoT services. So uh, we are working in this uh, uh, area, and in particular on 
uh, coping with this problem. So next I am moving to a short presentation of the related work <coughs> in the area uh, of, of uh, recommendations. So moving to mathematical stuff and algorithms that they use for uh, generating a proper recommendations to your users. Uh, this is relatively new scientific uh, discipline and uh, <coughs> in the past, <coughs> in the last few years, uh, it also includes uh, machine learning uh, techniques, deep learning, so in the artificial intelligence, in addition to mathematical statistical uh, uh, <coughs> methods. Uh, so it's a multi-objective uh, type of optimization. Uh, it includes uh, user understanding. So many of the methods uh, here include uh, uh, creation of user profiles, uh, either by the user himself and maintained by him or more frequently by the service provider on the fly and even in many cases without the user knowledge and then these user profiles are used to get information about the best service that may match this particular <coughs> user. Um, other methods include content understanding, so topics or uh, different functionalities of services, uh, what are they about, uh, what entities are included, etc., etc. Uh, <coughs> talking about the recommendation algorithms, uh, we have multiple users and uh, in the general case multiple <coughs> items, or let's call them resources, because this could be, as I said, items, services, things, it doesn't matter. So resources with different uh, features, uh, belonging to different categories with different attributes. And then for the users, we have many different uh, features, including, uh, for example, gender, uh, demographics, uh, browsing history, geolocation, and so forth. And then, uh, we also, or the methods, the algorithms, also use additional information that they're getting from the user activity, the user behavior. So on what service or on what service component the user click or browse or mark for future use, target, or write a comment or review, etc., etc. So the more information we're getting about the user behavior, the better. So the simple user behavior is click, no click on particular uh, service, which is a presentation of his interest in that particular uh, service. So based on multiple clicks on different uh, uh, similar service to the one that might be of interest to the user is uh, uh, the thing that is used here. And this is the service that is uh, <coughs> recommended to him. Uh, now, there are two approaches actually, and the one that I explained to you is uh, related to the so-called exploit approach. So in this case, uh, the service or the service component with the highest predicted click to ratio is uh, supplied to the user. This is the best match for that particular user, or the other approach helps the system, the algorithm improve in, uh, with time. So this is the explore approach where uh, what is recommended to user is not the best match, but the best one from the point of view of the system, of the algorithm, in order to make it uh, better. So classification of recommendation approaches uh, exist, uh, and so basically there are two big groups. Uh, the first one is the so-called content-based uh, filtering, CBF approaches, and uh, the other, the concurrent, is collaborative filtering, CF type approaches. And the first one, uh, <clears throat> the main uh, role here is played by user profiles and also resource profiles and finding uh, similarities in them. So recommendation could be the user base or resource based uh, and usually resource based one is uh, working better than the other one uh, 
The main drawback here is that uh, this approach, this type of approach, uh, is limited to uh, uh, has limited content to analyze. So we need to get a lot of a lot of information to build this content, to build these profiles before we could start making uh, good uh, recommendations. Uh, in the other type, collaborative filtering, here prediction is based on the past user behavior. So um, the user past transactions, ratings, reviews, tags. So this is called user resource interactions. And what is usually built is a matrix of such uh, interactions, which is then utilized uh, by the algorithm uh, <coughs> for service recommendations or resource recommendation in general <coughs> case. Uh, the two main subtypes here are memory-based uh, approaches uh, based on the assumption that users who share common interests have similar tastes, and the other one are model-based approaches which use uh, techniques from machine learning. And uh, then recommendations are computed by the models that are trained on this user item or user resource matrix that is built with the time. The benefits of CF are that it's uh, 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 based on ratings, uh, could include also rankings as, uh, as well. It's domain free, which means, uh, which means it could apply for any area, not only to item recommendations, but also to service recommendations, things recommendations, and so forth. And it's more accurate, so meaning Collaborative filtering uh, works better than content-based filtering. <coughs> so here is our research scope. Uh, the work we are doing at the moment is exactly in the sub-area of uh, collaborative filtering, uh, which is based on past user item interactions and different type of feedback. The main two types are explicit feedback, so these are reviews, comments uh, made by the users, uh, tags as well, and implicit feedback, which is uh, the subject of this, of the current presentation, which means browsing history, uh, clicks, etc., which might be interpreted as interest from his site. Of course, there are some inherent limitations to the collaborative filtering. Uh, the two main problems relate to data sparsity, meaning that uh, in this matrix, user resource matrix, multiple elements are missing. So we don't have information about particular service, about particular item, no clicks, no action, no tax, no reviews, etc. So as you can see in uh, most of the existing recommendation data sets, the sparsity is more than 99%. So we are dealing with less than 1% of, of available information. The other one uh, is the cold start problem, which relates to a new user or new resource, which uh, just uh, uh, came into place. Uh, so a new user with only a few ratings or a few comments or a few tags, we don't know almost anything about this user, so how we could uh, recommend uh, any suitable resource to him. Uh, and you can see in most recommendation data sets to date, uh, about 50% of uh, users or items or resources uh, relate to this uh, problem. So it's hard to find similar neighbors and discover rating patterns, so difficult to find other similar users or other similar items to the newcomers. And this is a particular uh, huge problem in real-time recommendation scenarios. So insuff insufficient information available to exploit, which leads to unsatisfactory prediction results. So common solutions here are to make better use of existing information uh, so, to dig, uh, you know, deeper into information using machine learning or deep 
learning techniques and the second approach here is to integrate any additional information that might be uh, got from other sources, for example, from social media, from user interactions between themselves, etc. And now I'm going to present briefly the research that we are doing in this uh, sub area of service recommendations. Firstly, the models that we developed for service recommendations, and then a few words about the elaborated recommendation framework, uh, which is uh, exactly uh, targeting uh, most of the problems that I just explained. So the, our objectives are to develop uh, novel recommendation models. Uh, the first one by incorporating the intrinsic information which might be available within the user resource rating matrix. So this information that uh, has been not exploited so far but can be potentially used to improve recommendation performance. And the second objective is uh, to develop uh, novel recommendation models by incorporating additional information, as I mentioned, for, from social media, for example, from trusted networks between users and so forth, which specifically addresses the problem, uh, the problems of data sparsity and cold start. So our main contributions in this uh, field uh, are related to incorporating various kinds of additional information into existing CF models. For example, we develop uh, two such models, so-called user MF, matrix factorization, and user rec, uh, which incorporate user feedback into a matrix factorization approach. Uh, the second uh, group of models which is actually the subject of this uh, top uh, of this uh, presentations uh, incorporate item weights into sparse linear models so this is the so called weighted slim model that i'm going to present in a minute this are merely based on user item matrix and the third group of models these are novel cf models incorporating additional item features uh, into matrix factorization uh, so the main model here is the feature MF. So here on this slide, on the next slide, you can see the main four models that uh, we developed for the uh, area of service recommendations. And you can see uh, they are uh, they're all more or less addressing the two main problems of data sparsity and cold start. And from this, now I'm going to present briefly the weighted slim model, uh, which is a ranking-based collaborative filtering model with item weights. So most of the existing approaches, they don't consider item weights, which is a significant drawback, as I'm going to explain to you uh, now. So basically, recommendation tasks uh, <clears throat> can be divided into uh, groups, rating predictions, and ranking predictions. The <clears throat> rating predictions, uh, we predict the rating that a particular user may give to a particular service or service component. And the higher the rating, the better for recommending this type of service. In the ranking predictions, we order or reorder services based on ranks that are calculated using the particular model. And then the top N services are recommended to this particular user. So regarding the sources, this could be based on explicit or implicit feedback, as I already mentioned. And the model that I'm going to present in a minute uh, is in the area of ranking prediction with implicit feedback. As I mentioned, most of the uh, existing models, they don't consider weights. They 
assume that all items or all resources, all services are equal or more or less of the same popularity, which is not the case, as you know. For some group of users, some services are more popular than other. Uh, and so this should be taken into account. So you can see here uh, in the example that I'm presenting now, let's say uh, we have a user uh, which, uh, who used uh, two items, two resources, two services in the past, let's say L1 and L2. So we have information about this. And now we have two new services or service components, I and J, and which one of these we should recommend to this particular user according to the model that we use. So these models uh, usually are based on information provided by similarity matrix, which shows similarity between uh, uh, resources. So here are the seen resources, unseen resources, and some similarity indexes. And then we have a mathematical model which shows how to calculate the predicted rating for these unseen components. So in the K nearest neighbor uh, model, for example, without weights, you can see the formula here. And if you use this formula, you can calculate the predicted score for uh, item I for this user would, would be 1.2, and for the other uh, item J, it will be 1. So, of course, the higher the rating, the better. So, in this case, we will recommend item I to that user. But is it really true? Is this the case? No weights I use here. So let's assume now that we're taking the item weights into account, so which makes a lot of sense. And then we came up with uh, this model, weighted slim, which is based on another classical model, slim, which stands for sparse linear ranking model. And see here you can see the formula of uh, our model and these are the item weights. They include it in the formula. They take part into the calculation of the predicted scores for users. And now if we use this formula, we can see that the item that we should recommend is not I by J because it's getting now higher rating, higher score, 0 0.8, than item I, which is getting 0 0.375. So in many other uh, similar situations, this might be the case. So we made, uh, uh, we conducted several experiments on the film trust data set, which contains uh, information about movies. It's a public available data set, yes. And uh, we use different evaluation metrics like precision, recall, F1, etc. And we compare our model to your the baseline model, pop rank, and to two state-of-the-art models, SLIM and SLIM BPR. And you can see here the results that in, on all metrics, our model performed much better than these three models. Uh, so this is the model uh, that I wanted to present to you. There are also other models that we incorporated in our service recommendation framework. And you can see the structure, the overall structure of this uh, framework. And you can see here in the recommendation tier, the main component is the recommendation engine, a software component which uses models like this exactly to uh, calculate the predicted score for users and then to provide personalized service recommendations to each interested users in each particular case and application scenario. So the conclusion. Uh, is that service recommendations are very important, especially if you take into account the needs for users always to be uh, better served and better connected, uh, which goes to uh, the always best connected and best served communication paradigm, A, B, C, and S, which by 
the work we are doing exactly can be um, realized in the near future. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions or comments,